Hello, I'm David Mandel. I'm your instructor. I'd like to tell you just a little bit about this class. Um, most everything is on the Desire to Learn site. If we go to the Desire to Learn site, um, the beginning looks very much like this. I put relevant news on the news page in the front. On the content tab, there is a section called uh, Course Information that has most all the information about the course. Um, there's not much more that you need to know about the course, but um, I'm going to say a few words about the course anyway. You should take and read the syllabus in great detail and print out a copy of the schedule so you have the schedule with you at, you know, so you can use the schedule. Okay, um, let's look a little bit at the schedule. It looks somewhat like this. Um, let me see if I can shrink this, uh, shrink the image of myself here. We don't need that at the moment. And uh, it's in a PDF format and it looks like this. It gives you the listing of all the course material week by week. Um, the other thing we have is the syllabus. It's pretty much a standard syllabus. It's maybe a little longer than most, but um, but it's got most of the standard information that your average syllabus has. Um, normally, I think class attendance is quite a, important, but since we do not have a, um, since this is a distance class, um, what is important is that you sign on to the site, say, three times a week and that you participate. It's also very important that you participate in the um, discussions on the discussion forums as well as just doing the homework assignments. Um, I'm available, as it says in the syllabus, as much as possible. I do accept telephone calls. In fact, I'm enthusiastic about telephone calls. I will also answer things by email. I sometimes get behind reading the forms. I try to answer people in the forms, but it doesn't always happen because I occasionally get behind. Um, and especially when I'm doing vi creating videos or I um, am behind in grading homework, then I don't get to people quite a, I don't read the forms as thoroughly as maybe I should. Long term, should you uh, want to contact me after the class? Hey, um, you know, I, I'm part of the open community, uh, open source community. You're part of the open source community. Um, people contact people all the time in the open source community. You're free to contact me at any time. Um, okay. The course design is, um, I leave the course a little bit loose. Um, I give you, the bulk of the class is in the, um, is, is in the, um, homework assignments I give you, the labs. Spend time and do those thoroughly because that's where you learn things. Where you learn things is by doing things. And um, uh, the labs are really the bulk of the class. I do give some quizzes. The quizzes are sort of to test to see if you've read the uh, textbook. Um, but I, the bottom line in the class really is the uh, labs. And um, the labs are a little bit vague because real jobs are a little bit vague. And um, um, if it's not quite perfect for you, you're free to change the labs a little bit. I just, I want to see some work and some good work. Work that's at your level but challenges you. And um, that's why I try to give you freedom on the labs. I also do not grade people against one another. You're not being graded on a curve. What I want to see is I want to see everybody make progress from where they're currently at in the class. So um, 
One of the other unique things I have is um, about my grading philosophy, and I should shrink this, is my grading standards are, you know, they're sort of typical. An A is over 90%, a B is 80 to 90, uh, 80 to 90%, so on and so forth. However, notice this stuff in bold print, which says um, an A, you not only have to be above 90%, but you have to have all your work turned in. I'm a sticker for getting your work turned in. Also, a B, you can have just, um, what's it say, one missing assignment, uh, C, a couple missing assignments. You really have to get your things in. I, I'm, you know, if you're out in the real world, you get a contract, you know, you only get paid if you get the contract done. So I'm a little more tolerant than many instructors on accepting late work. Um, I ding you a little bit on the late work. If the late work's really good, I might waiver the, the late penalty. But, um, and my philosophy is software computer projects have this thing that sometimes they fall behind, sometimes things don't go right. Um, we should get things in early, we should be under budget. But what I have found in practice, usually, unless you're in big trouble if people kill a project, but if people don't actually kill a project, you can often beg and get a little more time and a little more money, if it's not a lot more, and get the project done. And if it's a good quality project and everybody likes the results, two years later, when they're looking for somebody to hire for a new project, they're going to look and they're going to f have forgotten that it was late, have forgotten that it was over budget, have forgotten a lot of other stuff, but they will be using that thing. And if they like what they got, they'll say, that's the person for my project. And on the other hand, if you turn over a miserable job, it might be on time. It might be under budget, but they're going to forget that in two years' time. What they will remember is it works bad. And so, you know, ideally get things in early, get things in under budget, and get things in and do really quality work. But if you can't do that, all three of those, it's better to go with quality and fudge a little bit on the time deadline. Um, there are dangers in that. We see that with the uh, Columbia River Crossing Bridge where, you know, what, $120, $130 million was spent doing feasibility studies that design uh, seemed to design a mess for a bridge. And they got you know, that means hundreds of people were working on that project. That's a lot of money. And they got cut off at the knees because um, because they went way over budget, way over time, and people got fed up with them and said, no more. That's fair. And that does happen, and that's a risk you take if you're late. And along that line, if you put everything off till the end of the course, I will say no. I won't accept it. But if it's, you know, an assignment's a week, two weeks late, um, and they're coming in on a continual basis, I'll accept them, I'll ding you a little bit, and that's it. Um, and as I say, the reason I do that is I think it reflects reality more than, um, more than having just a, a zero tolerance rule on that. Um, however, don't make a habit of being late. Also, I have generally not given a late penalty until after I do the first grading of the lab. Um, and usually, well, last class, I didn't do the first grading for about a week. Um, that's not really entirely fair to people that do get in and on time. So, But uh, I will probably be doing the first grading usually maybe three days after it's due or, well, I, I make no promises. Um, 
along those lines. Okay. Um, everything else is in the uh, syllabus here. I will say every syllabus is supposed to have a boiler sex section boilerplate section on academic integrity. I want to make it clear that um, plagiarism is cheating. Plagiarism is bad. However, I do want to make it clear that open source software is about working together. Actually, most software, most things are about working together. They're about teamwork. They are about not copying but having assistance from other people and giving credit where credit is due. Um, use other people's work. Do what you want. Just give credit where credit is due because people deserve that. And, uh, and that's fair game and that's encouraged. That's the way open source software people work. Okay, um, other things, um, I will be having online get-togethers this term. I will talk about that in a totally separate video. And um, everything else in this section is totally self-explanatory. And since we're already into the class, enough said. Bye-bye.